Welcome to the Living Flames of Fire podcast. Our focus here is to help you grow spiritually and take you deeper in the knowledge of Christ. It's time to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Welcome your host, Fulfillment Obi. Hello everybody. I want to welcome us all to the conference and thank you so, so much for um, joining us, even if you are listening on a later date. I so much appreciate your presence and I want to bless the Lord for organizing and bringing this conference um, to us and I am so, so excited. This conference usually holds every month, um, specifically every month and with the intent of helping believers and everyone who is a Christian is their work towards salvation, is their work with Christ. So we deal with issues that really plague Christians, things that are really a burden for them. So we deal with those things so that they can have um, the experience, the knowledge, the wisdom to go through life situations as they walk with Jesus. And this month, we're talking about dialogue. Dialogue and it's uh, a part of prayer. Um, we're going to talk about prayer in depth and talk about how we can effectively build a life of prayer, a life without any limitation. When we stand to talk to the Father, to communicate with Him, so we'll be able to do that effectively. So before we start, let's just pray. Come in the conference into the hands of the Lord and everyone who will be joining, who will be listening, that the Lord should bring forth His word like His word should flow like rivers of living waters. His word should change our life. His word should transform our life. His word should turn our life around. Let's just open our mouth and pray. Tell the Holy Spirit to open your hearts this evening as you are about to learn from God's word. Oh, Jesus, King of glory, mighty man in battle, the Lord of glory, the Lord mighty in battle, Spirit of the living God, we have come to your presence to fellowship with you again, to draw information from you so we can live the life you have called us to live. We've come your presence and we are asking, Father, that you fill us with your word. You bring forward your word. You use me as a worthy vessel to communicate the mysteries and the depths of the kingdom to your people. That everything will be made plain. Everything will be brought to light. That after this conference, their life will be transformed. Everybody listening to this audio, his or her life will be transformed. Their prayer life will be transformed. They will have no cause to regret and they will see the limitation in their life just reduce and disappear. Everyone who listens to this audio who joined this conference will be so empowered that they will begin to empower other people. Prayer will no longer be an issue and the devil will stop attacking their prayer life. We give you all the glory, Father. We worship your name. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. As we start, we ask that your spirit lead us. In Jesus' name, we've prayed. Amen. Okay, um, this is the class conference, as I said, organized by the Living Flames of Fire, which is an evangelical organization. Um, our vision is to inspire a deeper work, a deeper work with Christ. So everything we do um, in this ministry is to push forward and exalt Christ and make sure that Christ is known around the world. That's our focus, and that's what we stand for. So this is the class conference, as I said earlier, is organized so that we can help believers in their journey in faith. So there are some issues we deal with as we journey with Christ and as we journey in faith that have become a bone in the neck of many believers. Many believers don't know how to handle those issues. That's why we organize this T-Class conference. Um, today we're talking about dialogue. We want to go into the depth of prayer. I want to see how we can build an effective life of prayer. I want to see how we can 
scale our prayer and take it to the next level so that we no longer have to deal with those things that have been drawing us back. Dialogue. Okay, we're going to start. I've dropped um, a guide on the group. So we're going to follow that guide so we'll stay on track. So if you have any questions, you can just um, write it down or jot it down. Then maybe after the conference, you're free to ask your questions. Okay, we're going to start talking about the definition of prayer. The true definition of prayer. Now, over the years, people have thought that prayer is just talking to God. Maybe um, they will take a certain posture, maybe kneeling, sitting, bowing down, and they begin to talk to God. What well, that is an incomplete statement and an incomplete definition. Prayer is communicating with God, communicating with the Trinity, the Godhead. So when you open your mouth and begin to pray, you're, what you're doing is that you're communicating with God. And so there should be a response. That's when dialogue comes in. You're not just supposed to be talking alone, um, just um, forwarding your request to God, but you should be able to engage in a conversation with God. And as you begin to talk with God and begin to communicate with God. There's this platform that opens up for you to learn and for you to deepen your understanding about the things of um, God, the things of Christianity, for you to expand your spirit and to become better at every point, every, um, every aspect of your life will just become better by you just communicating with God on a daily. So many people, they leave their houses every morning, they talk to God, they come back, they talk to God because of their tight schedule and their businesses, no time to, to focus on the things of God. They just talk to God. And most believers, all their years, all their lifetime, they have just been talking to God. They have never waited on God to ask, what is God saying concerning this particular situation? What exactly does God want me to do? So they have this habit of just going to God dropping their request before God and they run off. And that is why most of their prayer life, most of our prayer lives um, is suffering. We are suffering really, really, really Really, really much when it comes to the issue of prayer because we've just it's just one sided. Now we're going to talk about the original design. We're going to go back to the beginning to see how God really designed prayer, what prayer should be like, what um, was God's design, original design for prayer. When God made and created man, He made it in such a way that He will be able to communicate with Him. So the Bible says that God will come in the cool of the evening to communicate and to have fellowship with um, Adam. Them. But we sometimes confuse that with prayer. There's a difference between fellowshipping and praying. And I'm going to give us the difference um, in definition. What happens that what happened at the time Adam was created was Adam was still learning about the things of God. Notice he had not yet eaten the fruits of knowledge of good and evil. So he had limited knowledge. So the reason why God needed to come every evening um to communicate, to fellowship with him, to, is to teach him some certain things he needed to know. So Adam was capable of, of many things. He was capable of a lot of stuff. Things were deposited into inside of him. He does not even know what he's capable of. So God needed to come to um, Adam every evening to fellowship with him so they could talk, discourse, and so God can continue to build him up in knowledge. So that is fellowship. Fellowship is all about communion with God, communing with God, having an intimate um, moment with God, a moment where you and God will involve in deep worship. He will begin to reveal things to you, show you things about your future. He begin to open up things that you never thought was possible. He begin to build you up in the spirit. That, that intimate moment is what we call fellowship, and that was what was happening with Adam. Now, the reason, one of the reasons why Adam fell was because he did not yet understand understand the mystery of prayer now adam only thought that god is going to come in the evening to check up on him but he never knew that there's a presence the residing presence of god in him so if adam have knew that maybe he would have not eaten of the fruits he would have not been persuaded to eat of the fruit so that is why he told if let's just go so leave and cover our nakedness maybe god will not find out so they were trying to hide from god not knowing that god is everywhere so that alone um, made it very easy for the devil to deceive man. So because there was no there was no knowledge um, about the presence, the residing presence of God, and so prayer was not done appropriately. Adam only focused 
on the communion he had he had with God every evening, and because of that, he um, he fell. He fell from grace, and so a, an effective prayer life of prayer was not built at the beginning. So as man began to progress with God, then he began after eating the fruits and gaining of the um, gaining knowledge about the things of God. He now knew a little. His eyes was open. He saw the necessity to begin to pray effectively, to communicate with God. Now, everybody that God has used in history, in biblical history, had have had a very strong prayer life, a very strong life of prayer. Let's take, for example, um, Abraham. Abraham would have not been able to achieve the things he achieved without communicating with God. So, if you look at um, Abraham's life, I was studying Abraham's life very well, you find that, that um, it is not something that can be easily modeled because when you begin to talk about Abraham, he communicated with God as if God was there with him. Like he talked to God and God talked back to him. So, it is very, very difficult for modern day Christians to put this into perspective because they have been trained to believe that all they need to do is just to talk to God and drop their request before God. Maybe they are going through any life situation and things are hard, so they just need to go to God and talk to God. But that was not how it was right from the beginning. Abraham, Enoch, those people, they heard from God, they communicated to God, and they presented the matters of their life to God. And God directed their steel, told them what to do at every point in time. So the communication line between them and God was strong. So they lived a life of prayer. Now, in those days, there was nothing like a prayer life. They, were, they don't need to wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to set 30 minutes in the morning for prayer, 30 minutes in the afternoon for prayer, and 30 minutes in the evening for prayer. That was not done. The spirit was always connected to God, trying to um, discern when God is going to speak, what is he's going to do next. Their mind were occupied with the things of God, so it was possible and very, very um, easy for them to keep that communication line with God active. Now, let's take this down to our normal relationship, our normal um, relationship with, our, with ourselves, humans. Now, you find out that no relationship can thrive without communication. Communication is the foundation of everything every relationship so if you as a as a man um have a relationship with someone or a friend a wife a spouse or someone and you just said 30 minutes in the morning 30 minutes in the afternoon or 30 minutes in the evening what's going to happen to the relationship that relationship is going to die it's going to dry off and there will be no substance so the substance of every relationship is the um power of communication how effectively communication is being done and that's just why and that's just what prayer is all about that is why you see a lot of Christians are suffering today trying to build a prayer life where they, when, when they were supposed to live a life of prayer. They are trying to schedule time to give to God. Now, um, I, I'm going to go down to talk about some limited adopted standard. When we were brought into Christianity, the way we were taught, um, it was it was given to us as a form of religion. I've told people time without number that Christianity is more than religion. Christianity is life. So the life we live is Christ now living in us. So that means we do not have any life. We are living by Christ, by living by the empowerment of Jesus. So if you, as a Christian, you practice Christianity as a religion, then you're putting yourself in danger. So what does religion teach? Religion teaches us that you have to set um, um, some minutes in the morning and you have to go to bed. Without, you don't have to go to bed without praying. You must pray before you go to bed. When you wake up in the morning, you're going to pray. Those things are really important. They are good. You, know, you should do them. But that should not just be the end. If you are if you're going to do that, setting 30 minutes um, in the morning, afternoon, and evening for God, then your relationship with God is going to suffer and it will be impossible for you to um, pray effectively, one, and pray ceaselessly. Bible talk about pray without stopping, pray without ceasing. Those things cannot be done if you practice what religion have taught you over the years. So you have to remove that from your mind. You need to know that God is always there with you. His presence is always our abiding wherever you go in the market in your um in the your place of work wherever you find yourself the presence of god is always there god is always there with you so that level of consciousness should give you the mind that god is always willing to speak to you at every moment but people do not give god attention people do not give god the opportunity for god to communicate to them so because of their business busy schedule or how their life 
is they just drop things with god and they run off and god is standing on the other side and he said i I really want to talk to you i really want to communicate with you i really want to have a conversation with you but most people do not give god that time so the limited adopted standard is just that you have to build your prayer life you have to set up a specific time in a day where you talk to god now as i said before setting a specific time in a day to talk to god is important but that time you're going to set um, and keep aside for god this is a time for fellowship intimacy with god but where you where you and uh, where you begin to rub minds with God, when you begin to um worship Him from the depth of your heart and allow the Holy Spirit to take over, that deep intimate um moment with God was what Jesus was always retreating to do. So when you see Jesus after teaching, preaching, and um, doing miracles and healing the sick blind, and um, opening blind eyes, he will always retreat to have a personal time with God where he'll be able to commune with God. And one of those moments, he took the disciples with him to the mountain, and that was during the moment of transfiguration. Notice that when, during that um, moment, um, Jesus did not just pray, but he communed, he communed with God, and Elijah and Moses and the prophet were there with him. It was so, it was so mind blowing that the disciples could not just stand and look. They were afraid, they were shocked, and they had to put up um, a stone at an altar so that that particular moment can be remembered. So so that is supposed to be our experience whenever we set our time for God. We should not just, just say, okay, when I'm going to pray 30 minutes, drop your request before God and you run off or you sleep off. No, that should not be done. When you are when you communicate with God during the day, you talk to God and God talk back to you. You go back to your secret place and you begin to um open up the deep things of your life to God and begin to ask God questions and you people begin to communicate and you worship God from the depth of your heart. You see that you begin to grow at an exponential rate. God will begin to reveal things about your life that you do not even know god is going to begin to reveal things about the future that will put you in awe and when you do that daily it will be impossible for your christian life to be limited why because you are operating at that level with god where everything about your life is made known to god and god is now revealing things to you so how will a believer that lives this kind of life make mistakes in life it will be difficult for you to make some certain type of mistakes or make the wrong choices because every matter of your life, every matter about your life has been tabled before God. You haven't God have talked about it in the moment of deep worship and intimacy with God. God has revealed a lot to you in your um private time or your secret time or your time of your time of your time of setting aside for devotion. So you go out during the day, you keep your connection with God very strong, and you open up yourself so that any time God can communicate um with you. Um let's talk about some misconception about prayer first um we have um we we have some people that believe that if a christian doesn't pray for hours and hours and hours that kind of christian is a weak christian now i've searched through the scriptures try to find these things in the bible but these things were are just mere human wisdom they are just things that people have invented over the years there's no way in the bible that um we were told to speak Pray for a um, specific um, number of hours. That no, that was not that was not written in the Bible. What was written was that we should continue to pray and we should ensure that we pray continuously. So there are no number of time, um, hours or days that you should pray. What you should do as a believer when you begin to grow your relationship with god and strengthen your spiritual life what happens is that you begin to spend hours with god without knowing it so when people come up on stage and say if you're a believer you can't pray for 10 hours you've not started what they're trying to do is they're trying to fast track your christian life everybody as a christian have to grow to that point where they are able to keep the um the connection line with god very strong and there's a level you grow in god where 10 hours with god is just nothing so what people do today is that they try to force themselves and when people begin to force themselves to do the things of god then error begin to set in the bible have instructed us that we should pray by the spirit or in the spirit it is when prayer is done by the empire empowerment of the holy spirit that we can begin to pray effectively so 30 minutes with the holy spirit is much more valuable than 10 hours been praying in the flesh 
I have a lot of Christians. They pray in the flesh. They, they pray for 10 hours in the flesh. That profit, that would profit you nothing. That would profit you nothing because you have just wasted valuable time. So 30 minutes with God, 30 minutes um, um, in the presence of the Father, communicating with Him by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit will be so valuable to your life than spending a lot of time where I'm just opening your mouth, speaking or saying things that is not even recognized in the heavenlies. So instead of you forcing yourself to pray, the first thing you should do as a believer and as a Christian is to ensure that your spiritual life is um you're, you're going spiritually every day and your spiritual life is strong so when you begin to grow in the knowledge and the wisdom of christ and you begin to train your spirit to spend um time um with the holy spirit or com- um, communicating or communing with god you find that these things begin to you do these things with ease you can just go into the play your secret place i want to co- i want to have fellowship with the father and you check the time and see that oh you've spent six hours or so so forcing yourself and trying to push yourself to pray is not the wise thing to do we are told to depend on the holy spirit the holy spirit will help us onto all things in our weaknesses where we don't feel the urge to pray where you don't feel like praying that's when you should call on the holy spirit please i need to communicate with my father please help me help me then the holy spirit will begin to open up your spirit and you see that when you begin to talk from that standpoint depending on the holy ghost it will be easy easier for you to communicate with god let's talk about the types of prayer according to the scriptures there are four or five major type of prayer and there's an acronym for that which is acts a c t s we have prayer of adoration um prayer of confession thanksgiving and prayer of supplication uh, according to the model that jesus gave to us um, um, we can find that these are the major type of prayer. Prayer of adoration, our Father who has in heaven, hallowed be the name, you adore God. Now, this is mostly for Christians who are new in the faith or who are trying to get into the principles of prayer. Prayer of adoration, prayer of confession, you confess your sins and maybe you've wronged God, maybe you've done something that is not right, then that is a time for you to just pour out your heart like David will always do, Lord, I am, I am not perfect, I've done some things that are not right please help me prayer of thanksgiving you thank god for the things you have done for what you have done in your life for the things you have fulfilled his promises his faithfulness you thank god for that then prayer of supplication prayer of supplication goes beyond um asking for things like bringing requests before god but though it's part of it supplication we we, we can divide it into intercession um and um praying for the nation praying for people um praying for our loved ones all those things are inside the prayer of supplication especially when things are going wrong in your community in the country in the nation then we begin from the depth of our heart to pray that things will change things will get better from the depth of your heart pray for the weaknesses of people pray for people to grow when you pray about stuff presenting issues of the heart to god then you are supplicating you are you are praying the prayer of supplication i'm not going to spend much time here um i just want to just give us um the the major type of prayer we have in the bible i'll go over it again acta that's acta that's act um prayer of adoration prayer of con- confession prayer of thanksgiving a prayer of supplication we're going to talk about we're going to talk about um Something about the spirit of prayer and supplication. But before we go into that, I would love us to quickly go through the scripture so we can back up the things we've been saying with um the scripture. Okay, the first scripture we're gonna look at today, um, that goes in line with our main theme is first Thessalonians chapter five, verse seventeen. If you are with your Bible, please just open to first Thessalonians chapter five, verse seventeen. Okay, it says pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. We're going to go to Luke chapter 18, verse 1. That's the second scripture. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. So, if you're your Bible, please just read, 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 read with me. Okay. Okay. We said one day Jesus told his disciples a story to illustrate their need for constant prayer and to show them that they must never give up. Now, if you read that scripture down, Jesus was talking about um a lady who went to a judge to ask the judge for um to ask the judge for justice and she was persistent. 
extent until her request was granted jesus was trying to paint a picture to tell them that you must continually pray even if you don't see the result initially you must keep on praying now let's talk about the spirit of prayer and supplication now to constantly pray to keep praying without ceasing you can't do it on your own you need something called the spirit of prayer and supplication the holy spirit is there to help us pray help us tarry in the place of prayer every prayer um done without the spirit is an empty prayer i've said that before now there's a time in your life there are seasons in people's life where they are so broken by the situation around them that they begin to pray and that prayer comes from their heart you see people praying this kind of prayer they are crying tears is flowing over them because of the tight situation they found themselves in and they know at that very moment nothing can save them or help them without prayer have you seen people that are suffering from terminal disease or sickness that is incurable sickness that are incurable those kind of people they pray from their hearts and you you know when they begin to pray those kind of prayer the holy spirit is um the holy spirit is moved into action this is what brings healings to people's life when you see people pray and they are instantly healed or uh, they pray from the depth of their heart and you see things just change in a moment it is because the spirit of prayer and supplication have been put into action now this kind of prayer comes from deep within this, there's a story the story of hannah she had been humiliated by uh by, by by her neighbor um the wife uh, the second wife of the husband she had been humiliated and she has been crying to god please give me a child give me a child and eli came and saw her lips were moving he said, oh, lady are you drunk she was no i'm not drunk i'm just tired of this situation and i just want god to answer me at that very moment the spirit of god was 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 in action and that was where her miracle came from so most of us the reason why we are void of miracles and we have prayed and nothing is happening is because we are praying from um from from the flesh there's nothing there's nothing that is driving our prayers to the heaven there's nothing to transport our prayer to the heaven so that god will know how important it is um for that particular situation to be solved the people of israelites spent um extra years in egypt against the prophecy and um this happened because the people refused to pray they were praying for their captivity to be to to be for them to be released of their captivity but this prayer was not done by the spirit of prayer and supplication when daniel began to pray about the captivity of the, of the israelite in babylon because it had exceeded over 40 years or so he began to do this prayer with deep groaning he did it with the whole of himself he gave himself to the prayer an answer came an angel appeared to him is that appeared to him and told him we have been trying to get to you but the prince of Persia held us now every prayer that you have prayed that is not done by the spirit of prayer and supplication that is not empowered by the spirit of prayer and supplication that prayer is um, um may, might not yield the desired result so if you are trying to pray for somebody that is sick and you are praying from the flesh then don't expect the holy spirit to just go into action um to go to just to just do his work and just heal the person that prayer must be done by the empowerment of the holy spirit now let me make this more practical let me speak in um, um in the new testament language now when i talk about the spirit of prayer and supplication i'm talking about the holy spirit the holy spirit is there to empower us to pray now i have to talk about the the the, the gift of tongue most people confuse praying the holy ghost and um this the gift of speaking in tongue these things are two separate things and it has caused a lot of argument in the christian circles over in the christian circle over the years so a lot of christians based on some certain scriptures they have been misquoted or taken out of context have thought that prayer um, of the spirit is speaking in tongue now i don't want to go into this because i will not have time to really explain it in details but one of the scripture that is mostly used to support um, um praying in the holy ghost okay, let's go to the scripture first corinthians chapter, chapter 1 verse 14 let's quickly go to that scripture that's one of the scriptures we use um first corinthians chapter 14 let's go to verse 15 thereabouts okay 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 let's start from verse 
um, 14. He said, For if I pray in tongues, my spirit is praying, but I don't understand what I'm saying. Well then, what shall I do? I will do both. I will pray in the spirit and I will pray in words. I understand. I will sing in the spirit and I will sing in words. I understand. Clearly, Paul was talking about the, the gift of speaking in tongues, but there's something you must notice in the scripture. The word spirit, the first letter was written in, um, in small letters. It was not capitalized. Everywhere in the Bible that the Holy Spirit has been written, you see a very big S. It's written in capital letter, just like God cannot be written with a small G. It's not possible. So what Paul was trying to say is that he's going to pray in his with his spirit, as his own human spirit, and he's going to pray with his understanding. Now, when he was talking about prayer in this context, he was saying our spirit, when we pray in tongues, we give our spirit access to connect with the spirit of God. Even if we don't know what we are saying because we are in the flesh, our spirit is making it as session for us we are praying with our spirit now i I don't want to go into this i said but the previous class conference um light light your candles i talked about how important the spirit of a man is and how we can connect with the holy spirit um to do a lot of great stuff and wonderful stuff so you um if you don't really understand i will advise you to go back and listen to that um audio um that last two months we talked about um light your candles now what paul was trying to say is that i will pray with my spirit and i will pray with my my flesh like with my understanding so that i can understand what i'm saying it wasn't talking about it wasn't talking about um the gift of the or gift of tongue is just praying with the holy spirit because there are a lot of people who are not giving the gift of tongue it doesn't mean that they can't pray in the spirit so the gift of tongue is um let me say an opportunity a privilege to help you pray in the spirit because when you begin to pray in the holy um pray with the gift of tongues you will connect and um, with God easier. It's faster for you to connect with the Spirit. It's faster for you to edify yourself so you can connect with the Holy Spirit. But that doesn't mean that you cannot pray with your with English or with any other language and still pray in the Spirit. So the gift of tongue was given, is given to a believer to help edify mostly the church unbelievers and to edify the believer himself. So let us not confuse the gift of speaking with tongue and praying with the Holy Spirit. Now, what does if you read that scripture again, you see Paul saying, pray with the spirit. Now, there's a difference between praying with the spirit and praying by the spirit. Now, every prayer that is done by the spirit is heartfelt. It comes from the inside of you. The reason why um, um, the, the Lord will listen to David and not listen to Saul is because whenever David stand or kneel to pray, the prayer always comes from the inside. So the sincerity of his heart and the depth of um the depth of um, of what he carried on his inside always portrayed, was always seen in his prayer. Yeah, that's why if you read through the book of Psalms and see the prayers of David, it moves you because it is not just it's not just speaking from his flesh. Something from the inside is moving him. So when you stand to pray, the first thing you must do is to try as much as possible not to pray from the flesh. Try as much as possible to connect your spirit with the Holy Spirit. Let the prayer flow from the inside of you. You don't just need to just start talking and just start dropping requests to God. Give yourself time to connect with the Holy Spirit and begin to pray by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. If you feel weak and you feel you can't pray, you can say, Holy Spirit, please empower me to keep praying. Empower me to pray. Help me pray. And he will help you to pray. If you are conscious of this fact, it will be very difficult for the enemy, for the devil to distract you in the place of prayer. Many people go into the place of prayer and they are thinking about their clothes, their bags, and what they're going to get in future, their vacation, and all that. The devil just keep dropping thoughts into their mind because they are not connected with the Holy Ghost. They are not connected with the Spirit. So it's easier for them to be distracted. But once your spirit is connected with the Holy Spirit, there's this change. Even if you are praying in tongues, there are, some, there are a lot of people that pray in the tongues and they pray in the flesh. All they are just saying, they are just blabbing. Nothing is really happening. When you begin to pray in tongues by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, you will know. Things will begin, your spirit will begin to, to, to open up. You will begin to receive information from the heaven and it will be easier for you to keep praying. But when you pray in the flesh, trying to struggle to pray on your own, that's where the problem is and that's where many people miss it. So if you've been trying to, and struggling 
beginning to pray, then it means you have not been praying by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. So the first thing you should do as a believer, when you want to start praying, know that you cannot pray by your power. You need to depend on the Holy Spirit. So ask the Holy Spirit to help you pray, help you intercede. At any point of your prayer where you feel that you are losing it, you're not connected with God, and it's difficult for you to pray you can actually call the attention of the holy spirit and he will help you to pray so once you begin to pray daily by the empowerment of the holy ghost you will be shocked the kind of stuff that will be happening around your life you'll see that situation that you thought were impossible to be to to be solved will be solved by divine intervention because now your prayer have weight in the realm of the spirit now when we pray we let us understand that we are communicating with the spirit we are communicating in the spirit so things are going on in the spirit where um things are going on in the spirit that we might not see or understand the realm of the spirit is vast so when you stand to pray and you are connected with the holy ghost and you begin to pray first of all what the devil does is try to distract you try to bring things in your mind like things like you yeah you have failed to do worries anxiety and all that if the devil see that you have gone past that point where he can't distract you what he tries to do is to try to limit you try to drag you try to pull you out of that deep experience so that he can cut the line of communication so at any point in time as i said if you feel go- you are going down in prayer just call on the holy spirit he will help you he will help you connect and your prayer will be effective the bible said the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avail it much from today if you start applying this in your life if you start putting these in- things into your life you will notice a dramatic change you will see things just shifting now, no longer praying by the flesh, but praying by the empowerment of the Holy Ghost. Now, there's one part I missed when talking about the t- type of prayer. We have the prayer of warfare. Now, well, a lot of Christians have taken this to the extreme, and the way they pray when it comes to spiritual warfare has really, really um, um, affected a lot of Christians today. A lot of people don't know what to. They don't. They don't really. They don't really pray anymore. So they focus their attention on the enemy, the devil. So they are always praying against the devil and the enemy and they leave little or no time to communicate and to commune with God. This is bad. If you give all your attention to the devil, then what um, what time are you going to give to God? First of all, you must have the basic understanding of the scripture, knowing that God has given you power over the works of the enemy. So what you simply need to do is to take authority, take that authority and enforce that authority. So if you feel that the devil is responsible for the things you're going through, all you can just do two three minutes by the understanding you have with the scripture is to tell the devil get your hands off this thing get your hands off that i take authority over the works of the of the devil concerning this particular aspect of my life and it is done believing that it is done it's as simple as that there's no there's no need for you to spend hours and hours trying to fight the devil the devil has already been defeated he has been crushed and the victory the victory has already been given to every believer all we need to do in the place of prayer is to enforce that victory on the devil and he will have no power over your life spells can be broken in a minute if you understand and you can understand this christianity sorry religion has lied to us over the time you see people trying to cast out demons and they spend hours and hours that was not how it was done and that was not what jesus did jesus simply told the demon get out and it went out so people will tell you that for you to have that kind of power that kind of spiritual power you need to you need to spend hours and hours in praying and telling god oh please i just need you to give me power give me power so i can cast out demon and it's not like that the scripture says he has given us power over principalities and power and over the works of the enemy so simply simply just apply that to your christian life the devil is powerless he has no power what he wants to do is to intimidate you so that you'll be scared so you you fall into fear so he can control your life but when you understand that the power of god resides inside of you no demon can stand no power no principality can stand um to limit you to pull you down so it's all boils down to understanding that's why paul say i pray that the eyes of your understanding the eyes of your understanding be enlightened so you can know the hope of his glory the exceeding great power people do not know this that is why they buy into the idea that they have to pray and pray and pray and pray and pray for the enemy now um if you go if you if there are some certain um, point in time where you need to tarry in the place of prayer that is because um every prayer 
we we need to be done by faith. Faith is what takes your prayer from the physical into the spiritual realm and bring result back to you. Now, there's a difference between praying by the spirit and praying by faith. Now, what um does what does it mean to pray by faith? Like I said, you have power over the works of darkness and over the uh, over the over everything that have to do with the devil, the limitations that comes um with living in the flesh. You have power above those things, but you must understand that faith we need to come into play. Faith is simply trusting and believing God. So if you do not believe that God has already given you power over the work of the devil, there's no way your prayer is going to have any effect in the realm of the their spirit so when you pray the devil will just laugh at you because he sees into your look into your heart and sees that you do not have faith so take away doubt take away every sign of doubt trust god that god has already won the battle all you need to do is to simply enforce the power of the kingdom that is available to every believer now let's digress a little let's talk about dialogue dialogue now i want to go into the part where i'm going to um teach us how we can actually pray without ceasing praying without ceasing is possible it's possible very possible that part of scripture have mainly been avoided by a lot of christians because they can't just wrap their mind around praying always it's very possible now first of all i have to establish some stuff so that we don't get confused First of all, you must understand that the presence of God is everywhere. Everywhere you go, God is there with you. Now, people have tried to differentiate um, the manifested presence of God and maybe the actual presence of God, but I don't think that that's correct. I think that every point in time, the presence of God is always made manifest. The problem is that we fail to discern, we fail to recognize God's presence, and we fail to be conscious about His presence. And that's where all the, um, that's where everything um all the problem we're having today um is coming from the presence of god is always made manifest so it means that you can be working a job and instantly pray about a, a sickness and receive healing immediately because the presence of god is always made manifest jesus says to the disciple i will be he with you always always so it means that jesus is always with you and if jesus is only with you you can strike a, a conversation at any point in time so you can be working a job or you can be relaxing or you can be just you can be strolling you can be riding you can be on your car or you can be flying um flying the air uh, on the plane traveling to another country and you are praying in the inside of you you are always praying always communicate like i said communicating with god so for example this what this what this how i got started i noticed that during the day what happens is that i get worried a lot about stuff that are not working in my life i look at my life and i say how am i going to do this am i going to do that and that spurs anxiety depression and i have to go through all those stuff in my mind over and over and over again and one day i just told myself what if i can use every moment and every opportunity i am using to worry about stuff i can't solve to pray and it struck me that instead of worrying i can actually pray so if i'm spending 10 hours a day worrying about stuff i cannot change if i can just pray at those moments then i can believe that things will change for the better so what i start to do whenever the thought of depression the thoughts about stuff not working in my life come what i do i just begin to pray in the spirit lord i know you are faithful enough to bring me to an expected end i know you are faithful i know you have done this i know you have done that and i begin to give thanks and i begin to pray and i begin to present my request to god and i continue anytime that thoughts come the thoughts about things not working in my life come i pray at those moments so it was easy for me to get started at that point secondly i had begun to recognize that the presence of god is everywhere so i can be walking and be talking to god in my mind i can be walking and be communicating with god in my mind so i don't actually need to 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 um to just find a position or to take a certain posture i can be doing a lot of stuff and i'm praying in the my spirit is praying inside of me i am praying and when you begin to do this you will be more conscious about the presence of god so you see that dealing with sin will be easier because your spirit is constantly praying now when i say pray i mean communicating with god so you can something might be disturbing you and you say god um this stuff is really a um it's an issue in my life i've been trying to um get past this point it's not working lord what do you think about it what do you think i should do who do you think i should meet is there anything i can do and um, 
God might in turn speak back to you, okay, saying, my son, you can do this, you can do that. You can talk about pretty much anything going on in your life. No matter how small it is, you can talk to God about it, and that's just prayer. This will build up the consciousness of God. And when you begin to move in this dimension, you find out that it will be, it will be impossible for you to be limited. You find out that it will be difficult for you to be faithless or to doubt God because you understand that God is always with you. You are always communicating with Him. So your faith level is high. Your spiritual level is high. When you always communicate with God, everything in your life will not look impossible. You'll be able to do things that people cannot do. And people will ask you, why is it that you are not worried in this place? particulars things are going so bad why is there no worry you're always smiling you're keeping the good attitude you're positive you just tell them i'm praying and i'm always praying they can't seem to wrap their mind around it because they do not understand but this is how and this is the way to go if you want to strike a dialogue with god if you want to talk to god daily then involve god in every aspect of your life no matter how little talk to god about it and continue to build the holy spirit sometimes you might need to wait for god to reply if you're not hear anything in your spirit i keep asking the lord lord what do you want me to do i'm waiting on you on this particular issue i'm waiting on you please give me a reply and if you do not hear anything you keep asking you keep asking so most of us are finding it difficult to hear from god but if you do this on a daily you keep doing this your spirit man will open up and you will begin to hear from god expressly because those that wait upon the lord the lord said he will renew their strength so even if you can't hear from god you can't descend the voice of god having this consciousness and always praying asking the lord for help and presenting the issues of your life to god and expecting god to reply and give you an answer in return we open up your spirit and you will see that it will be very easy for you to hear from god most of the times i i mostly these days um wait to go and pray about a particular issue for God to speak to me so I can hear from him. I am just walking on the road and I'm telling God, Lord, look at this situation. Look at what I'm going through. Look at what should I do? And immediately I receive the response and I just put things to action and I see things working out for me. So you begin to live a supernatural kind of life. People cannot understand how you are hearing from God so fast. God is revealing things to you so fast. And let me go back to the to the Old Testament where I talk about um abraham abraham never struggled to hear from god because he has developed a life of prayer now as christians we should not try to build a prayer life but to try as much as possible to live a life of prayer we are not to build a prayer life we're not to build a separate life of prayer but we have to live a life of prayer abraham walked with god he heard from god and whenever god wants to speak to him he heard he talked to god he even bargained with god concerning the issue um of destroying sodom and gomorrah so if you as a believer can start implementing this to your life on the daily you will be able to speak to God as Abraham did, as Moses did, as David did, as the prophet did, as Elijah did. Why? Because the Spirit of God resides in us and the presence of God is all over us. We can present issues to God at any time. We can talk to God at any time. We can communicate with Him at any time, wherever we are, whatever we are doing, and we expect to receive a response from God. And once you're doing this, understand that you're doing it by the power of the Holy Ghost. So you are empowering yourself, you are edifying yourself spirit on a daily now tell me how living this kind of christian life how it will be limited how the devil will be able to infiltrate your life how things will just go wrong it will not be possible because living this kind of life the lord will always reveal dangers to come he would always keep you protect you and you will always be ahead of the devil so dialogue so it's not enough to talk about it's not enough to present your request to god actively communicating with god we so take you to the next level in this um, journey of prayer. Most of the most of somebody said, I do not have time. I have to deal with school and deal with work. Yes, you have time. A day you talk to people. No matter how busy you are, you must communicate with people. And the Bible said there's someone who stays a friend that stick closer than a brother. So there's someone close says that's that are very close to you, closer to you than anyone. He's always there with you. So why not strike a conversation? Why not talk to him? Why not present the issues of your life to him? Why not talk to him about the things that bothers you the most? Why not talk to him about your fears, your worries, your anxieties, and those things you're scared of? Why not talk to him so he can reply you, so he can comfort you? Why not give the Holy Spirit an opportunity for him to take the issues of your heart to the Father so you can receive response that will keep you going? 
living this kind of life, you will hardly be worried about anything. You, in the Bible says, instead of worrying about everything, pray, 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 pray. Pray about everything. Worry about nothing. It is the life we have been called to live. A life of constant prayer, constant communication with God. Now, I've, I've, I've given us an idea what it means to pray without ceasing. Praying like this will set your Christian life on fire. You will be on fire. You will be burning. Situations will look very small to you. No matter how big or life-threatening they are, they look or they seem, they will not mean anything to you because you know that you have someone standing beside you that is greater than every situation, problem that is around your life. So there are sometimes things might go so wrong and you're talking to God about it. The Holy Spirit just come and say, don't worry, my son. Everything is going to be all right. That alone will put your mind at peace. It will keep your mind at rest. So if everybody is trying to work themselves up, looking for solutions to their problem, you are at peace knowing that God is already in control. And this was the reason why when Jesus was in the boat and the boat was sinking and the disciples were trying as much as they can to get the water out of the boat, Jesus just stood up and said, you know not what spirit you are of. How long will you be with me before you learn? Before you learn. This was Jesus trying to draw their attention. Why could they not just pray? Pray, pray, so that the storm they are going through, we 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 become. We are going. Most most of us are going through storms, seasons in our life of seasons of the disaster where everything is looking chaotic. Nothing is working. Nothing is just. Not everything is moving the opposite direction. And the Holy Ghost is saying, "Why not pray about these things?" daily the time you're using to worry work yourself up trying to look for solution why not put it in prayers why not engage god in prayer why not communicate with him so that he will tell you what to do this is the pattern and this is the way a believer should live his life this is how great men have lived lived their life smith wiggles will say I cannot pray for hours, but I cannot go five minutes without praying. These men have understood the mysteries of prayers. These are things that we are not taught in churches. These are things that have that have been have been hidden from a lot of believers. Those men did things that people thought were unimaginable. unimaginable. They just cast out demons without stress because they are always engaging in prayer. So, and when they pray, their faith is being built. No matter how strong the demon is, the situation is, they are always smiling, knowing that they have the power to scale that situation. He also tell him, I'm going to talk about some testimonies, great men. Um, Smith Wiggles Ward, um, Kenneth E. Hagin, how those people were able to cast out demons without stress, do things that were impossible, heal the sick, just walking on the road, somebody just run up to them, I'm, I'm deaf, I, I, I can't really hear you, and they'll just tell the person, you're healed, and that's all, because actively their mind is praying. So situations, problems, issues of life, is nothing to them anymore because they understand that God is always with them, them engaging with God, nothing is impossible, and everything with God is made possible. A story I heard, I'm trying to remember his name, but I can't really remember. Um, he was there was someone who was ill, mentally ill, and he was possessed by demons, and it it, it takes about ten people to hold him down. So he entered into the room and he told them to lock the door and let him let him let him just let him just be in the room with the person. And he stepped into the room and. He just told the demon, look into my eyes, you see Jesus. And that was it. And the person was delivered on instant. How? He has always been engaging in prayer. He now knows that he, he, he moves with the presence of God. The atmosphere around his life is not just an atmosphere um, of fear or doubt, and, but the very atmosphere of God. So any situation that comes within his side conference, we immediately, we immediately just disappear. A. A. Allen was, uh, was, was so powerful, engaged in prayer to the extent that he never even needed to, to, to cast out demons in in, in the name of Jesus, he just told them, if this person is sick, if this person is demonized, just go tell the person that A.A. Allen is around. And immediately, the demon hear that name, he ran. 
you would, the demon will run out of that body, run out of that body. That's why the devil tell, told the seven sons of Sceva, Paul, I know, Jesus, I know, who are you? People, most people do not have any spiritual stance because their communication link with God is dead. They have never communicated with God for a, for, for a decade. And so in the realm of the spirit, they are unknown. They are, they, are, they are not known. The devil do not know who they are. So if they try to challenge the enemy, the enemy will just will always descend on them because he knows that in the realm of the spirit, they have no spiritual stand. Now, I've talked about a lot. I've talked about how you can live a life, be conscious of the presence of God, and how you can pray without ceasing, how you can live a life of prayer. They have been called to a Christianity of power, a Christianity of fire, a Christianity that has to do with proof. We are not called to live a virtual Christianity, a Christianity without proof of power. We have been called to change life, to topple kingdoms and territories, to do great things for God, to spread the message of Christ across the globe, to do things for God that people will look at and they will say that this can only be God. If we cannot keep our prayer life, if we cannot keep a life of prayer, it will be impossible for us to ever get close to doing those great and mighty exploits for God. So I hope our ideology and um, the way we look at prayer has changed. I, 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 I just want you to start applying these things to your life. I just want you to start putting these things together in your life and you will see how God will work with you mightily. It's simple. Always praying. Always praying. Always communicating with God. Always allowing the Godhead to, 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 to uh, keep a, a, a strong communication link with God. Now, We've talked about ceaseless prayer, adopting a life of prayer. Um, one of the challenges um, people also have when it comes to um, keeping a strong communication link with God is uh, is mostly the people around them, distractions. Distraction in our everyday life make it very difficult for people to communicate with God. Like I said, the solution to this alone is understanding and walking by the consciousness of the presence of God. Distractions are the things the devil uses to kill people's prayer life. So people's prayer life are not actually dead because they are, the devil is attacking their prayer life. It is because the devil knew that they do not have a strong communication link with God. So they are susceptible to the attacks of the enemy. What's, look at how it is. Look at the pattern. You do not keep a strong communication link with God. So you pray at specific time and it becomes harder to keep those specific time to pray at those specific time. So you keep missing your times, your prayer times. And the more you miss, the more your spirits keep going down. The more you miss, the more you, your spirit keep going down. And it comes to that point where you are so overridden by the flesh that you do not, you no longer have the desire to pray. And so when you try to pray, since your spirit is already dead and your communication line with God is dead, you begin to struggle, you begin to try, you begin to force yourself to pray. Most of the time you sleep off and it just go on like that. And before you know it, you are living a, a, a limited Christian life, a life without power, a life without fire, a life without effect, a life with nothing. Take the decision today. Okay, the spiritual atmosphere around your life will change. That you will step into buildings and demons will run out. You will not need to pray because you are engaging in constant prayer. You step into thin places and principalities will bow because you are praying constantly. And the atmosphere around your life, the spiritual atmosphere around your life is so tense with the power of God that demons cannot stand within your presence. When Jesus stepped into Gadarat, the, the the demons there and the demon they knew they knew somebody have stepped into this place and immediately they cried and said Lord have you come to, to to deal with us when the time is when it's not yet time so you need to to continuously pray until you saturate the atmosphere around your life with the power of God so that as you move things will begin to happen as you move things will 
begin to change as you move without even speaking situations will begin to rearrange themselves for your for for your good favor doors will be opened up onto you without stress because the atmosphere the spiritual atmosphere around your life is 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 so tense you have prayed till the presence of god is now manifested and people can see they can perceive that something is working with this person that is not ordinary how can you make that how can you make that become a reality in your life you can start today a simple consciousness of god and always pray talk to god about the little things in your life lord i am struggling i'm struggling to study the scripture i'm struggling to to understand the scripture please help me what should i do is there anything you can tell me that can be done lord i don't really have the money to take this course lord i can't put this together lord i'm bad at mathematics lord i do not know how to go about this particular issue lord this person is giving me a lot of problem lord communicate what should i do what should i do what should i do how can i do and let god speak back to you so that you'll be able to keep the consciousness that god is always with you and that will enable you to pray always then the spiritual atmosphere around your life will change and that will help you to keep that constantly with god that communication link with god active it will come to a point that you might not even need to 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 say thoughts in your mind you um, say to keep that like that thoughts your a particular body posture like you in inside of you you know that your spirit is praying there, there's this there's this there's this there's this depth you will go in god that your spirit will just be praying always i i will not really want to go into that now because it will not have the time to really dig deep into um into that um spiritual um that spiritual depth I've talked about it previous in previous T class conferences, but there's that level you go in God where your spirit will begin to pray unconsciously. Your spirit is praying. When you go to your sacred place, the more the, the, the time you have set aside for God, you will notice a huge difference. Benny Hinn will say that he will fellowship with God for hours and hours and hours. He started like this, talking to God, trying to communicate with God, and he moved for that to his secret place. He will spend hours and hours and hours with fellow in fellowship with God. He would look like he spent 30 minutes or two minutes. That's because he has built himself to that standard. So don't expect that kind of thing to happen in your life. You must start today to pray without seasons. Now, let me just throw this in. Why is it many people pray and situations do not change? Many people pray, people seek, the sick are not healed. Why is it that it looks like the power of God is no longer visible again, especially in this modern generation and this age? It is because of the limited adopted standard that people have been trying to put in place for decades. So the more people try to adopt this um, limited standard of prayer, the more they will be disconnected from the spirit. And that will limit the power of God to move across the globe. So if we are going to bring forward a revival, if we are going to change the world for Jesus, if we are going to see things change, then we must constantly pray. Now, prayer is to lead us to a point. I want to talk about a deeper work with Jesus, a deeper work with Christ. The Holy Spirit is to reveal the Christ. Christ gives the Holy Spirit to a believer so that their Christian experience, their Christian life will not suffer. But at the same time, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Christ, to ensure that Christ is constantly at the picture. Transformation in Christianity is only possible when we look to christ now prayer is to help us edify ourselves keep a communication link with god active so as we continue to build ourselves christ will be revealed more and more and when we begin to grow deeper in the knowledge of christ we come to that place in god where we are able to step into the impossible when about to, we are able to do things that are supernatural where we more grow in the knowledge of christ the more we are able able to bring forward the realities of the kingdom to the physical realm the more we are able to manifest the power of god in the physical realm so situations problems and things and issues of life do not change because first we 
are disconnected from the spirit we are, we are disconnected from god and our spiritual life is down and also we cannot manifest the this our spiritual experience we cannot manifest those things that god has given to us in the spirit in the physical realm because of all these things so if you want to manifest the 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 things that have been given to you as a believer in the spirit then you must understand the work of the holy spirit and the work of christ try as much as possible as you pray that the knowledge about christ you deepen it every day so you pray pray for understanding of the scripture tell the holy ghost to open the scripture to you so you can grow daily you can deepen your understanding about jesus the more you understand the more you know about christ the more your life will transform there's a mystery in the old testament where um jacob was was trying to increase the numbers of his sheep so he will keep a ring stick and those that were spotted at the water and if they want the the sheep is to give birth the sheep needs to constantly look at the reflection of the spotted sheep or ring stick sheep so that it will produce that particular breed that particular time type it's the same st- with us today the bible says as we continue to look onto christ our transformation and begin to transform to become like the image of the christ so when you pray keep this in mind keep this in mind that at the end point is just all about jesus to know more about christ so as you are communicating with him he's revealing himself to you he's teaching you about himself opening the mysteries of the kingdom unto you and you are growing daily then you see your christianity at another level a deeper work with christ a deeper work with jesus jesus is the end goal and should be the end goal now let me just um put this in order if we are praying for a particular situation we must understand that god has already given us the power to change situation so the bible instructs us to pray to god by the son through the son by the empowerment of the holy spirit i'll say it again to pray to god the father by the empowerment of the holy spirit through the son jesus that is the only way that prayer can be effective so we do not pray to jesus or pray to christ directly we pray to the father by the empowerment of the holy spirit through jesus when we do this and put everything into um into practice i can assure you that your christian experience will change for the better so I, I know I've said a lot. I'm going to open the floor to questions. I can already see some hands so up already. Um, we're just going to go into take a little some questions so we can see how the Holy Spirit will um, will reveal some certain things to us. If you have any questions, just raise up your hand and I'll unmute you and you can speak. Um, Miss Alice Ada, I can see your hands. Um, we are raised up, so please, if you have any question, just quickly ask so we can round up the conference. So we can just pray briefly before we round up the conference. Have any question? You have anything you want to say, contribute, or something you're struggling with? We can quickly talk about it before we pray, because we're going to pray a little and believe that the Holy Spirit will permanently help us deal with prayerlessness and help us step into that dimension in God where we continuously pray. So, any question? Okay. 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 Happy Chi. Okay, I'll unmute you. Just simply unmute your mic and ask your question so we can hear you. Okay. Um, I thought some of us had questions because I saw us raise our hands. So please, I've uh, unmute some of us for, of our mics so we can just quickly um, unmute and ask your questions. So we'll pray. Uh, 
Okay. Um, if there are no questions are coming in, then let's just run this off and pray. Um, I want us to understand one thing before we pray that a, all, every believer has been called into a life of power, a life of fire, a life of exploit and impact. No believer is supposed to be least in this kingdom. Jesus said, greater works will we do, greater works indeed we should do. So, no Christian should live a limited Christian life. So, if you're suffering, if your Christianity, your Christian life is dying, then something is wrong. Then you should try as much as possible to track, to trace the problem in me. May it be seen, may it be um, your, 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 your mindset or something. So, we have been called to a life of power. I want every believer, my desire is to see everybody, every believer do exploits in the kingdom, in that sphere of influence, in your business, in your, your workplace, in whatever you're doing, if you're an entrepreneur, whatever you're doing is to push forward the kingdom to ensure that the kingdom of God is established here on earth. That's the most important assignment every believer have to ensure that Christ is preached and to, to ensure that the kingdom of God continuously progress. So if you do not empower yourself spiritually, the devil will keep you down. He will knock you down. He will put things around your life that will that will limit your Christian life. At the end of the day, you go throughout this life without doing anything great for God. So you might not have to be, um, be an apostle and do some, some outstanding stuff, but around your sphere of influence, your workplace, at least around your community, you should be able to do something for God that people can look at and say, if not from this person, I would have been like this i would have been lost i would have been um destroyed by the enemy so i'm calling us to a life of power a life for fire a life of deep intimacy with the holy ghost a life of a life a life of impact a life without any limitation a life where you're able to bring forward the the, the possibilities and the realities of God's kingdom to physical reality where nothing will be impossible that's the kind of life i want to call all of us onto so we're going to pray briefly that the Holy Ghost should empower us to pray ceaselessly, to pray without ceasing, to continuously pray, to engage in constant communication with Him, to keep our spiritual life active, and to pray by the empowerment of the Holy Ghost. We're going to put it into prayer. Wherever you are, just speak to God. Right now, you can start implementing it. I know the Holy Ghost is there with you. He's, he's listening. So, just begin to speak to the Holy Ghost. Tell Him you're tired of the struggles with your prayer life. You're tired with your struggles, with your struggles of trying to pray always. You're tired with the, the, the struggle to, to put your prayer life together. You're tired with the frustration that comes when you are struggling to pray that today things must change for the better. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Pray to the Holy Spirit. If it's possible, if you can pray in, the, if you can pray in tongues and um, pray with the Spirit, open your mouth and pray in tongues if you can. Or however way you want to pray this prayer, just begin to pray. Let the Holy Ghost lead you because I, I know that the chains of prayer Lessness will be broken today and will be broken right now. That you will not leave this conference and still struggle with prayer. Impossible. Open your mouth and pray. Oh, Spirit of the living God, we bring forth a request of everyone listening right now, struggling with prayer, struggling to pray, struggling to keep the Christian life together, struggling to live an extraordinary Christian life by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lima na shika that the chains of prayerlessness and the things that have been put in caging them will be broken. That from today, by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of the anointing, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, they will step into a new season where they will be able to pray without season. And out of their mouth and out of their spirit, prayers will continuously flow. Prayers will continuously flow. They will grow to that point where they will be able to build intimacy with the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, we know you're working. 
We know, I know my, I know right now you're changing lives. I know you're empowering people. I know you are taking people to greater heights. I know you are taking people to the next seasons in their life where they'll be able to walk with you without limitation. I know you, I know, I know you are doing things right now as we speak. Oh, Spirit of the Living God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for what you've been able to achieve in this conference. You've, you've taught us a lot. You've taught us a lot, a lot have been said. And I believe that after this conference, that we will have a recourse to glorify you. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you so much for joining the conference. I really appreciate this um particular audio will be on spotify or apple podcasts um few days from now so you can always go back to replay the audio in case you miss anything um the living flames of fire like i said is an evangelical um organization focused on just wanting to inspire a deeper work with jesus to point people to jesus so that's all we do um we also empower people to live a life of fire a life of power a life that is backed up by the holy spirit so we are on youtube we're on facebook i want to encourage everyone of us to follow us on those platforms especially on youtube so you can get things like this our conferences come up every month at the ending of every month so i believe next month god will be bringing something fresh to us so if there's any way um, you can support or send a donation because we hold outreaches, we reach out to people, students, teenagers across um, state schools and all that. So if there's any way you can support us, the link, um, or the donation link will be, will, be, um, in the, will be in the group chat. Or if you are listening to this at a later date, it will be at the description of the podcast thank you so much and i pray that as we heed to this word that god will give us the power to continue to abide and to do these things if you have any question please you can drop them at the group and i want to also encourage us to share our experience what do you learn i want us to um have a conversation in the group so just share what you learn in this conference with the group so we can talk about it and we can further encourage ourselves to keep praying um ceaselessly praying by the spirit thank you so so much god bless you and i hope to see you in the next conference